As a part of this video, I'm going to show how to create product backlog in your project management tool called as Jira. So let's get started. So if you see my this project management tool, Jira, why do we need to create product backlog is something I'm believing you guys have already must have seen in my this video. So now I'm not going to talk about what is product backlog. And I'm just directly going practical way of really creating the product backlog. How do we really create it? So to understand product backlog, one thing you need to understand that product backlog is some set of tasks that product manager or scrum master wants his developer and tester to work tomorrow, right? If you have seen my that video, which is Agile and Scrum, which is uploaded on my channel long back. Product backlog are nothing but those requirements which were requirement before, but I being a scrum master, I have converted those requirements into my product backlog. Now product backlog are nothing but the set of tasks that my developer and tester should work tomorrow, right? Now for that reason, let me give you one example of one particular requirement, which later I will convert it into the product backlog with the help of my project management tool called as Jira, all right? Let us understand that we are going to develop tomorrow one new company called as MKT application, mkt.com. And the purpose of this mkt.com application will be to help people buy any products online. Maybe electronic gadgets, maybe mobile, or maybe shoes, t-shirts, anything. They, if they want to buy it, they can buy it. You have understood what is MKT application now? Now let's say that in the MKT application, definitely the requirement will be that it should have a login page. It should have a search page. It should have adding the product to the wishlist page. It should have adding the product to the cart page. It should have a payment page. It should have a confirmation page, right? Now I'm not going deeper into the whole requirement, but I'm just talking maybe at a high level. I'm just talking about the requirement so that it will be easy for me to make you understand. So now I believe you guys have understood the requirement. So this is how customer will tell the requirement in the form of customer requirement specification or business language to some company. Now let's say that being a company, we now have to develop the application, right? So scrum master or product manager will go to the backlog and in the backlog, he will start creating issues. When I say issues, I mean set of tasks. Can you see this? It has, you can create other stories, task or both. Now let's say that I'm creating set of tasks. So my first task will be login page of the MKT application. I have username, password, submit button, and forgot password. Forgot password as a link, submit as a button, username, text field, password, text field, submit button and password link. This is my first task that I'm creating in my product, product backlog so that my developer can work on this tomorrow. If I just click on that, now this is my first backlog. Number one. Now let's say that the second will be homepage. Homepage of MKT application should have list of products that we are trying to sell. Now let's say that that's my second task that my developer and tester should work on. So being the scrum master or the product manager, I will create it. Now the third task that I want my developer and tester should work on tomorrow will be possibly my add to this list page. So just click on that. Now that is ready. Payment page of my MKT application is my fourth task that, I'm, that I want my developer and tester should work on. The fifth will be probably confirmation page whenever someone has ordered a product. So this is how your product backlog looks like. If you want to just create them with just one click, this is how you generally create it. Now let's say that I created my product backlog maybe 
uh, when I created those, I had a lot of thoughts in my mind. So with just one liner, I created the multiple tasks that my developer and tester should walk tomorrow. But now what I'm doing is I'm going into each particular task and I can fill it up. Like all the descriptions, I can add it up. Now I'm going to a particular task. So now if you see here, now, now I can add a lot of things here. I can add a lot of things here. Now, like if you see description is totally incomplete now, nothing is written in that. So I can write a description of it. Maybe I can write the functional specification now. So I have written that the login page of the MKT application should have username text field, password text field, submit button and forward password link. So if you see, I have four components here, which is my username text field, password text field, submit button and forward password link. So maybe now in the description, I can write that in MKT application, which we should have a login page, which should have four components a username it should accept only valid mail id b when i'm talk so password is my requirement says that it should have Combination of alpha numeric plus special character to make the password strong. This is my requirement now. I'm going deeper into it. So if you saw before, I just said that this is how it should look like. In the description, I will write whatever I want to write. Now, this is how your uh, product backlog is created. Now, if you see here, I have a lot of things being the product manager. I have a lot of things here to do. What should be the priority of this particular task? So I can change the priority based on my understanding, whichever I want to deliver to the customer first. Maybe if I feel that this is the first thing that we need to work on, I will mark that highest priority. And if I feel that this is the confirmation page, right? If I feel that confirmation page is something that we need to work on, maybe probably at the last step, then I can change the priority of it. Maybe I can change it to low at present moment. And definitely I should add the whole description of it. I'm not doing it again because you, you guys have now understood how to do that, right? See, being the product manager, if you have something to show to a developer that when we are talking about this MKT login application, and tomorrow, tomorrow you also want to show him that uh, from a reference website that talking about any competitor website. Now, let's say that we are developing MKT application, right? Now, similarly, just like MKT application, we know that there are a lot of applications are available over the internet, right? So just to show my developer that how exactly my page should look like, there is an option called as attachment of photos. So I can go to google.com. I can click the photo that I want my developer to create it just like that. And I can paste it here so that now, I mean, I will just show an option to how to do that. Now let's say that I have clicked the pictures and after clicking pictures, this is my picture. I will just attach it. The reason I'm doing it because so that my developer will know that this is what my, my product manager or scrum master is expecting me to work on. So there is option like you can do that. So it has a lot of options now, attach, attachment, another photo, or if you see here, you can also write some code in this particular th task, but being the product manager, code snippet is nothing, but you can write your big project, big code into smaller snippet. Snippet is nothing, but it will have a very big code, maybe 10,000 of lines, but when you add in the snippet, it will look very smaller. And when you double click on it, it will become larger. So this is not for product manager and the testers. This is for the developer. You guys need not worry about it. It has a lot other option as well. If you want to add any code or status. So once you have done that, so that means your product backlog is ready. Now, if you click on this product backlog again, 
you can see that this are my product backlog. If tomorrow more tasks are coming that my developer and tester should work on, I can just create it randomly here and add it to the, my product backlog. So this is the backlog or these are the tasks that my developer and testers will be working tomorrow. So it looks exactly the same how you are seeing on my screen right now. But you know that uh, it also has the option of bug. Now let's say that in the production, we already have an existing bug. When I say you have a bug in the existing bug, that means it was never worked on it, right? So being the product manager, you can create a bug and keep it in your backlog. That means indirectly you're telling that tomorrow being, being the scrum master, it's my responsibility to tell my developer and tester should work on that tomorrow. Is It also ha has an option of creating an epic here. If you see that, I can create an epic, just like creating an epic first and writing the summary of it. Let's say that my epic is payment module and the summary will be making sure Payment is working for credit card, debit card, net banking, and UPI. See, now the reason I've created Epic because you know what you guys know what is Epic. Epic is nothing but it's a big requirement which later you want to break it into smaller requirements, right? Now, if you see my Epic, I'm just writing payment module. Now in my payment module, exactly, I have four other sub tasks, right? So that's the reason I have created a Epic. So the moment I will create an Epic, it will come here. Now this is your Epic. Now the reason I have created this payment module as an Epic, because I know payment module is a Epic itself, because in that there are a lot of things to work upon, right? There are credit card to be worked upon. Now there is a, a debit card to be worked upon. You have net banking to be worked upon. You have UPI to be worked upon. And similarly, you have a lot of things to work upon, right? So for that reason, I have created a single Epic. So Epic look like this. And under that, I can create multiple tasks now. I can create multiple tasks. Maybe my task will be now making sure credit card payment is working fine so this is how you create your product backlog this is how you create it making sure debit card payment is working fine so this is how you need to do the reason epic is not available over here when you are trying to create a backlog, it is not available here because generally it is believed that Epic is something which you cannot expect it to be done in a particular sprint. You need to be worked upon multiple sprints, right? There is a possibility that now when I am working on this uh, CC payment, now I may expect it in my first sprint. And there is a possibility that I may work on this particular payment method that is debit card in my second sprint. So that's the reason Epic in some companies, I mean, it all depends on the settings of this particular tool of this particular company, how they want to do that. Now, if you open it, you can see that it is linked to the Epic link called as payment module. I mean, just to make sure that it is a Epic task that is present and it has a sprint to be marked upon it. I mean, which sprint you want to add this particular tasks. So you can do that. So this is how you work on the product backlog in almost all the companies which are following your agile methodology. And this is how your product backlog looks like. You can add lot of tasks that you want to add it in this lot of tasks. I mean, how much of a number of tasks you want you can create in the product backlog. Who will create the product backlog? Your scrum master or product manager will create the product backlog from the requirement and then he will move this product backlog tasks to the sprint to make start of your sprint how he do that i will show that in my next video until then take care guys thank you so much